Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right now, before you attack, does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, hello, DJ here with the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And today we have another sponsored theme deck courtesy of Dragon Shield, and this one is about Street Fighter. They have three different awesome Street Fighter sleeves, and so I had a few different options about where to take this. But I decided to go with Chun-Li, and I've decided to have Diao Chen Artful Beauty represent this kick-ass character. So let's find out how Diao Chen can make a deck and how Chun-Li can give a little bit of extra flavor. Diao Chen is a very interesting and unique card because it was designed so long ago and in such a specific set. It was in Portal 3 Kingdoms, and this was a set designed to push Magic the Gathering into Asia. And so most of these cards were printed in Japanese, traditional Chinese, and simplified Chinese. There were only a few English versions uh, printed and mostly distributed in Australia. So we don't see very many of these cards. Fortunately, Dao Chen had such a cult following that it was reprinted in Commander's Arsenal. And so that's why we have this awesome black bordered updated version in front of us right now. So let's take a look at Dao Chen Artful Beauty. Three and a red for a 1-1 human advisor. Tap to destroy target creature of your choice. Then target creature of an opponent's choice. Activate this ability only during your turn before attackers are declared. <laughs> Alright, first thing, let's get this out of the way. Doesn't she look like Chun-Li? She's standing there being awesome, but then her ability is to like literally punch people in the face and kill creatures. Oh my gosh, it's so thematic. How on earth could I ever have such an awesome red commander that can also sort of fight? Very, very cool to have a street fighting based commander. It seems like everything that fights is ingrained in like a wolf or a hydra or something like that. But no, we got this kick-ass female lead punching other people in the face. I love it. And so she is the main theme of this Vorthos based deck, but we clearly need to find ways to support Diao Chan because we can't just tap her, kill something, and then that person goes, well, kill your Dao Chan back again. Because <laughs> then it's like a four mana, sorcery speed, uh, horribly slow kill effect. I mean, that's just not good. So we bas basically need to work around Diao Chan a little bit. There's some hoops we need to jump through. And because there's creature kill on a commander and it's slow, we're gonna wanna embrace a more controlling strategy. I'm a fan of mono red control because it feels a little bit different and Diao Chan feels like a different magic card. Actually, a very political magic card because they don't have to kill your Diao Chan back again. You could kill something and then they can kill something of another opponent's. That just makes multiplayer so interesting, so cool. So this political angle to it has me wondering, is Diao Chen's ability always symmetrical? Are there ways to cheat this kill effect? And spoiler, yes, there are. And so we run across a very interesting control deck in red that really relies on a bunch of problem solving. Can we be political to get what we need? Can we break the symmetry of our commander? Can we overcome the inherent weaknesses of a control deck in mono red? Well, first thing, let's work around Diao Chen. Let's find a way to equip her with the ability to kill things while remaining impervious herself. And that has to do mostly with equipment. Dark Steel Plate and Hammer of Nizan. If she's indestructible, then your opponents cannot destroy her when you give them the opportunity to kill something else. Similarly, if she has protection from red, she also can't be targeted. So Sword of Fire and Ice, Sword of Sinew and Steel, one on Dao Chen means that you kill your opponent's creature and they have to be looking somewhere else to kill a second creature, hopefully not even on your battlefield. And then finally Shroud, no one can target your Dao Chen when it has Shroud and so again they'll have to be looking somewhere else to destroy that second creature. One interesting note is that Hexproof does not work. The old Diao Chan Artful Beauty's text box is 
a little bit weird. It was designed uh, to be a very simple starter set. Notice it has like a little sword and a little shield next to the power and toughness. Uh, there were no instants, for example, in uh, Portal 3 Kingdoms, and so that's why it has this weird built-in sorcery speed thing. So depending upon what version you have, it could be confusing, but just know, Hexproof doesn't work, Shroud does. Now, Diao Chan's ability is not unique. We also have Stark of Wrath, which is another legendary creature, one red red for a 2-2. Tap, destroy target artifact or creature, that permanence controller gains control of Stark of Wrath permanently. So that gives us a very similar take to it, although I think I like Diao Chan better. I like the ability of forcing your opponent to kill something else and there's nothing on your boards. So they have to be looking at their opponents to try and kill other things. I think that's really cool. Also, we just mentioned like six really good <laughs> artifacts that we don't want blown up. So actually, I don't know if I want Stark of Wrath in my deck even though it feels like it could go in this style of deck. I wanna make sure to explore the equipment package, and I wanna talk a little bit about Godo Bandit Warlord. This can get us the critical equipment pieces we need. One thing that's good about equipment though, is that it can be switched around to many different creatures. But if we have a lot of different creatures, not all of them can be wearing this equipment, and then they're vulnerable to your own Diao Chan. So our creature count in this deck is going to be very low, but hopefully very impactful. And maybe more than one creature can wear the special equipment. If we're gonna include Godo to complement our equipment theme, we can also include Helm of the Host, which is a combo with Godo so that we can just win the game out of nowhere if we need to. It's kind of sometimes what control decks need, ways to just pop off and win the game. So what creatures are we going to include in this deck? Well, ultimately I want political creatures that give me card advantage, kind of like Dao Chan does. Atali Primal Storm, Robber of the Rich, and Grenzo Havoc Razor. All of these give us amazing effects when they start smashing into your opponents, and giving them incidental protections, or indestructible, or even unblockable with that Whisper Silk Cloak, yeah, that's gonna be great. I also like the steady card advantage of an enchantment called Stolen Strategy. We get the choice of our opponent's spells over and over again. By the way, whenever I'm exiling cards off the top of my opponent's libraries, I really, really like including Oblivion Sower. It falls into the I'm gonna use your resources and use you against my other opponents sort of theme, but also this can just give you a ton of mana out of nowhere. When you cast Oblivion Sower, target opponent exiles the top four cards of his or her library, then you may put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto the battlefield under your control. So this can regularly get you three or four lands, especially if you've been hitting them with Grenzo or Atali or that stolen strategy. Also, we can look at big mana in the form of Mana Geyser. This deck could be very mana hungry. A lot of times control decks are, and so some of the big plays late in the game might require a lot of mana. Next up, we have different ways to steal from our opponent's graveyards. The new Wildfire Devils is very, very good. People, this card is underplayed. Let's look at it carefully because it just came out and I'm not seeing it anywhere. So you need to put this in your deck. When Wildfire Devils enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, choose a player at random. That player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard. Copy that card. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So this can just get you incidental value over and over again. Remember, it can also hit yourself. And this isn't something that enters the battlefield and you have to wait for the whole turn to come around on your upkeep. You immediately get this trigger. I know people really shy away from the randomness, but trust me, this can get us mana ramp in the early game. This can get us a lot of different powerful spells. And so I really think that you should take a look at Wildfire Devils for your deck. If you want more consistent access to your opponent's instants and sorceries, Direfleet Daredevil can hit their graveyard and let you cast cool stuff. I think Direfleet Daredevil is a perfect example of these disposable creatures you kind of want in this deck. Her value is gained immediately when you cast that spell, and she can easily be equipped up with some swords, and if she happens to die to your Diaochen, then that's okay, because the value's already there. You can also gain a lot of value by creating tokens, almost disposable tokens. Mimic that is great because it's on theme. You're using your opponent's dead creatures and sending them back at them. Whenever you have a kill spell on your commander, I feel like you want to synergize a little bit with that creature death. 
And finally, another creature that's on theme with a control deck is Dual Caster Mage. It's a flashy 2-2 two -two that copies something. And you're gonna be casting a lot of spells in this deck. You're gonna be holding up mana to be interactive. You might wanna copy your opponent's spells as well. And then having a body lying around to hold a sword could be really good. Also, remember I talked about that need for a combo finish in a lot of control decks? Well, if you do like Dual Caster Mage, you might want to include Twin Flame and Heat Shimmer. Dual Caster Mage in either one of these spells will create infinite Dual Caster Mages, because you're going to copy the Twin Flame, which copies the Dual Caster, which then will copy the Twin Flame, which will copy the Dual Caster, and so on and so forth, until you have an army of hasty tutus killing everyone. and. Even though the Twin Flame and the Heat Shimmer really don't synergize with the rest of this deck very well, I mean, maybe some incidental cards like the Dire Fleet Daredevil. Oh man, Wildfire Devils, <laughs> Twin Flame it up. But a couple cards in your deck just to win the game can still be really good. All right, right in the middle of this deck tech, I wanna take a break to thank Arcane Tinman, that's Dragon Shield for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys. You should take a look at their Street Fighter sleeves. If you ever played the video game, if you were ever a fan of this franchise, you should pick yourself up some of these awesome looking sleeves, the exact same quality that all Dragon Shield sleeves have. Dragon Shield products are all over the place. If you find them at your local game store, go for it. If you want to support my other sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc., I'll have a link in the description that'll take you over there. Also, Jumbo 5 gets you 5% off your order. All right, let's get back into Diao Chan Artful Beauty in this Chung Li Spells Matter section. Let's find out how to blast our opponents. Well, I think the most appropriate card would have to be Swift Kick. It just is, right? Chug Lee has the amazing swift kick thing, like I used to love doing that. People, okay. But really that does no place in this deck whatsoever. We have very few creatures. They're mostly like two ones. Yao Chan herself is a one one. Swift kick does nothing besides kill your own creatures. So really, how about let's embrace the other moves she has and let's throw a Bane Fire in here. That is a great control finisher. Just Bane Fire someone out of nowhere. But really, in order to make a control deck, we need a bevy of spells, a lot of them in order to synergize together. One thing that we have to have is that card velocity, the card advantage to sort of churn through our deck. And I love the cards that we've gotten in recent years. Thrill of Possibility is brand new. One in a red as an digital cost to cast a spell, discard a card, draw two cards. Looks pretty normal, but it's at instant speed. Yeah, we wanna play at instant speed. Cathartic Reunion, one in a red, discard two cards, draw three cards. And another new card, Ignite the Future. Three in a red for a sorcery, exile the top three cards of your library until your next turn you may play those cards. Now, three cards for four CMC, that's a good old Concentrate or Harmonize, it's totally fine even though it is very limited in red, like you only have one turn to deploy those cards. Which in a control deck might not be that great because some of your cards are going to be reactive. But it's this second thing on here that does make Ignite the Future so strong. It has flashback seven in a red. And when you play this card from your graveyard, you may play all of those cards without paying their mana cost, which is a very cool upside. So I am a big fan of Ignite the Future. I've had it in a few decks. And so I really think that people are underselling it. Okay, so all of these cards don't give you a huge amount of card advantage. You're cards vanish, you have to use them immediately, or you have to discard in order to get your cards. So a lot of these end up with really strong card filtering, but not pure card advantage. That's why I feel like we need to rely on the other red card draw to really move us forward in card advantage and use some of these other spells to sort of filter our deck. And unfortunately, Wheel of Fortune, the best form of red card advantage is a hundred dollars, at least. But you don't need Wheel of Fortune because we have other really strong effects. Granted, they do cost a little bit more mana. I'm a fan of Corvath's Fury. Four and a red for a sorcery. For each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend discards all cards from their hand then draws that many cards plus one. Corvath's Fury deals damage to each foe equal to the number of cards in their hand. Similarly, Chandra Reed's discard all the cards in your hand then draw that many cards plus one. Now the thing that stinks is that you can never get back up to seven cards with these two spells if you are sitting at two or three cards. You just go up your hand plus one. 
I know, it just means that Wheel of Fortune is a very powerful card. Maybe you fill out your card draw suite with cards that mimic Wheel of Fortune, like Reforge the Soul or Magus of the Wheel. I do think that some combination of small draw and big draw is the right decision for this deck, and you can kind of balance it out based on your own budget. But do you know how to make Cathartic Reunion and these other small draw spells great? Double them up. Just imagine if you have a Pyromancer's Goggles on the battlefield and suddenly you pay a single mana, tap Pyromancer's Goggles, discard two cards to draw six. Yes. I know that's several cards going in and a lot of hoops to jump through, but Pyromancer's Goggles makes this deck so much fun. And there's other cards that can synergize with this too. Finale of Promise is very strong. I also like Primal Amulet, giving your spells a discount on the front end, and then when it flips over to Primal Wellspring, doubling them up. This can also work with our cards like Banefire if we want to double up damage. All right, so I feel like we have card draw covered and we have some single target removal with our commander covered. Now let's look at some of the mass removal we can add to this deck. Blasphemous Act and Fault Line are gonna be very good because often our creatures are gonna have equipment that give it protection from red. Blasphemous Act and Fault Line won't deal damage to those creatures or even have them be indestructible. We can also include a lovely card like Stuffy Doll, which also does not die to Blasphemous Act or Fault Line, and doesn't die to our own Diao Chen, but can also redirect some of this damage-based board wipe straight back at your opponent's face. Also, Ugin the Spirit Dragon can be a catch-all, because there's going to be stuff that Red has a hard time dealing with, and so Ugin the Spirit Dragon could wipe those things away as well, leaving a lot of your artifacts and equipment pretty well intact. Similarly, a single target removal, Ugin the Ineffable, again, gets rid of those pesky things like enchantments. I know, they're crazy. Uh, but also, Ugin has the added ability of being card draw and creating incidental tokens. I like the creation of incidental tokens because it can get damage through. Similarly, release the gremlins, blow up some artifacts, create some gremlins! They're so cute, and they hold swords really well. Even a card like Siege Gang Commander. This can help pick off and control the board a little bit better, but if someone just Diao Chan's your Siege Gang Commander, you got a bunch of goblins left over, even if they kill a goblin, like who cares? So again, I'm trying to mitigate the downside of Diao Chen and create opportunities for people to say, well, I could kill that stupid goblin or that gremlin, or I could look at this other player's silly angel and kill that instead. I'm gonna do that. And then my Diao Chen gives me two for ones. Volcanic Offering is another single target removal spell that goes into the political nature of this deck. I love putting your opponents to the test and saying, what are you going to kill next? Oh no, it can't be anything over here. Divergent Transformations. I noticed that there are a lot of tokens in this deck, like gremlins and goblins and all sorts of stuff like that, and very few real creatures. And so Divergent Transformations can be aimed at our own creatures to generate, I don't know, a Natali out of nowhere? Even if it's something like a Robber of the Rich or a Godo Bandit Warlord, that's still really, really strong. And then finally, the catch-all of Chaos Warp, and this deck is a little bit of chaos, and I love that dynamic. And so, if we like the dynamic of chaos, let's go ahead and throw in Chaos Wand. I want to be casting my opponent's spells over and over and over again, and hopefully using them to control the board. So, what does Diao Chan, Chung Li, Artful Beauty, and Street Fighter deck look like. Okay, so it's a control deck that doesn't have a huge board presence, instead relies heavily on lots of spells and controlling the board. Luckily, Diao Chan has us control the board and uses a lot of politics and sneaky stuff to get things through. Occasionally, I'll land a very sneaky Grenzo or Robber of the Rich, and those will get through some damage and I'll get some card advantage based on those. Also, I have the added ability of equipment to supplement those tiny creatures or tokens to gain that little bit of card advantage here and there. 
This deck can win the game out of nowhere in a couple different ways. You can combo out with cards like Godo and Helm of the Host. You can play a dual caster mage and a heat shimmer. You can even go super big. Let's double a mana geyser to create so much mana we won't know what to do with it. Except we do. We're going to fault line everyone to death, but the stuffy doll is gonna cake you guys out first. Thank you so much for watching. I know this deck looks janky, but you guys have to try it. I made one, it is so much fun to play. It's not a traditional control deck, it's very political, it's very weird, and it really performs well in low power metas and high power metas as well. Okay, maybe not high power metas, medium power metas, but it is very, very fun. I wanna thank Dragon Shield one more time for sponsoring this video. Another shout out to Cool Stuff Inc., but mostly I wanna talk about my patrons who support me every single month for all of my videos. Thank you, patrons. You really make content creation happen. And thank you so much for watching this. I hope you guys have a great one. I'm gonna go play some Street Fighter on the emulator I downloaded for this video. All right, everyone, bye. Thank you.